welcome to Carly Tackles making a light up cornhole set. Our next step is to drill a six inch hole into our cornhole board. You have two options for doing this. One is to purchase a six inch hole saw. I would highly recommend this way. It's way easier. All you have to do is find the center of the hole, stick the middle of it, pull the trigger, and off will go. And this is the option we'll be doing in the video. Option two is to find the center of the hole and draw a six inch circle out on this. Drill a hole in the middle using a regular drill bit that you can fit a jigsaw blade through and then cut all the way out using a jigsaw. When measuring where your hole should be on your board, number one, make sure you're at the same side that you put the holes in your 48 inch board. So this is where the bolts are in your leg swing. So you want to make sure you're at this side of the board when you drill a hole. Otherwise you're going to have a hole at the bottom of your board. And unless that's a new way of playing, I wouldn't recommend it. To find the center of where our circle needs to be on our core holes, we're going to start by measuring from the top. Regulation size says the center of your circle needs to be 9 inches, so you can use a 12 inch speed square or a carpenter, also known as a framing square, to find your 9 inches. And then make your mark. Now your next measurement is determined by your width of your board. Was your board actually 24 inches? If so, then just measure 12 inches and from the other side and then flip it over and check your work to make sure it's accurate. If your board was 23 and 3 quarters of an inch, you're going to need to find your center of wherever that was to mark your hole. So make sure you take into account the width of your board's actual dimensions. So for this one, this one was 24 inches long, so I'm going to use my framing square because it's a little bit easier to get those longer measurements. Right here is the center of my hole, and that is where I'm going to put the center of this. This hole saw is nice, it has little holes at the very top, so I use those to kind of peek in to make sure I'm centered, and start drawing. Kind of go slow when you're doing this, you don't want to tear up your boards. Um, and kind of make sure you're straight up and down as best as you can. This is one of those drill bits you cannot use a drill block for. So we're going to start here. position, I'm actually going to sand the inside of this hole using a rotary tool and a little sandpaper bit. Once you have your hole sanded, we can set this board aside and cut out the next hole. Now we can attach our legs to our frame. Now on our legs, you may remember we cut it at a 30 degree angle. When assembling, you want to make sure the longer side is pointing away from the top board. We're going to use our 3 h inch carriage bolt, slide it through the frame, slide our leg on. We're going to use our washer and our weed nut to fasten. Now give this leg a good test run. Now remember we drew out that curve and we cut it out with the jigsaw and sanded it. There is a chance it, stay, it may not lay flat with your board, so you'll have to take it apart and do some sanding or more cutting. Make sure it fully rotates without hitting the top of your board so you have no interference, and then it should rest against the back plate when it's installed correctly. So this one is good to go. So now I'm gonna attach the next one. Some of you may be asking, why did I attach the lake so soon? Aren't you gonna sand it and paint it and finish it? I absolutely am. And when I do that, I will remove the legs. I did this for two reasons. One, I wanted to make sure that my height from the ground to the top of my board meets regulation size. 
regulation says from the ground to the top of your board, it should be 12 inches. So I wanted to check to make sure I was in line with that. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drill holes in the side for my handles. And I like to have the legs on there when determining where I want to put the handles. So that way I have good weight distribution. If you just go in the middle, that's easy and you absolutely can, but you're going to have a little bit heavier at the end where you have your hardware. Make sure you grab a pencil so you can mark where your fingers are on the board when you're doing your weight distribution test. I collapse my legs and have them fully tightened. And I'm using two fingers and I'm holding it up. You can see that the bottom of the board is going down, so I'm going to shift my two fingers and kind of get a good feel, maybe a little bit more of what's balanced for weight. And then I'm going to draw a line to mark the middle of where I want my holes. The size of the holes that you want to drill into your boards for your handles is determined by the diameter of your rope. This rope is three quarters inch diameter and that's what we'll be drilling holes for. When determining the length of the rope that you need for your handles, I do 22 inches long. And when I drill the holes into the boards, they'll be eight inches apart. Using the mark that I drew when I was testing out my fingers, that would be my center. So I measured four inches to the left and four inches to the right so that my holes will be eight inches apart. I also found the center, center thickness of the board. Again, this is a two by three. So I measured in an inch and a quarter and an inch and a quarter on both sides. Now I'm gonna drill it a hole using my three quarters of an inch drill bit. Now that I have both cornhole boards assembled and holes drilled and ready to go, I did remove the legs and the bolts and it's time to stand and then stain or paint whatever you would like. There are some regulations around sanding and texture, so I just want to read them to you here. The board finish shall be sanded to a very smooth texture, and there shall not be any blemishes in the wood surface that might disrupt or distort play. The board can be painted with a semi-gloss exterior latex paint, resulting in a surface that allows bags to slide, but is not so slippery that allows the bags to slide back down the board. If you want to build a regulation set cornhole boards, then follow those guidelines. If you just want to make a nice cornhole set and you can paint it, do whatever you want with it. These are yours. You're making them. Have fun. I'm going to sand the sides with an orbital sander. Um, I'm going to do 120 grit to sandpaper and then 220. I have some special fish decals because my mom wanted fishing cornhole boards because she loves to fish and so I'm going to place them on the boards and then I'm going to put a polyurethane coating over that and hopefully it doesn't destroy the decals and then I'll sand that down so it can be smooth and I can get rid of some of this little groove texture. Now that you have your boards stained, painted, finished however you like, it's time to add lights. Now I get the lights from Glow City. Um, I'll include the links in the product description below. Um, I like really using the lights. I've made like three sets of cornhole boards with their lights. Um, one of the reasons we did not pre-drill the holes for the lights before we finished is depending on the color, the diameter of your lights can vary. For example, for some reason the blue lights are a little bit smaller in diameter than the red lights. Um, so I wanted to make sure I had the lights in in my shop before I drill the holes. So we are not going to follow the instructions that came with Glow City. Feel free to, but I feel like you can get a little extra lighting underneath the board if you follow my instructions and I'll walk you through how to do that now. Find the end piece that's not connected to the lights of your lights and this little rubber piece, this is what we want to match our drill bit to because we actually have to reverse run this through the entire corn horse set. So you want to make sure this plug-in can fit through it. Now this is the blue light, the one that's normally a little bit skinnier, and it appears that a 3 8 inch drill bit will work for this. If not, I'll try it and make it a little bit bigger with the next size up. 
We want to drill the hole into our 2x3. We want to make sure that we're not putting it in our half inch plywood at the top. We want to make sure that the hole is in the top of the 2x3. We also want this hole to be centered. So we want to measure in. Now again, if your boards were 24 inches wide, this should be just measuring to 12. If they were a different dimension, make sure you do your half measurements. So mine were 24, so I'm going to make a little bit mark at the 12. Now this is a 3 8 inch drill bit, and I want to make sure I do not cut into this. So I am going to measure down where I would need to start on this guy. Alright, this mark should be the center of where I put the drill bit, and should make sure that I don't drill into the plywood board. So I'm going to drill my hole. Now that your hole is drilled, it's time to run your wire through the bottom. Now we're going to pull this all the way out. We are going to start at the end of where we want our lights. So we are going to start our lights right here, right next to our hole, so that way we have everything lit and work our way around. In the kit with Low City, they, can't, they come with these little wire holders, which makes it nice, you don't have to go out and buy something else, and they come with screws. So when you kind of, so when you put them on, you can get an idea of where your screws need to be. Now we want the lights near the front of the board, so this other side that you can't see, but we don't want them too high that they would hold a bean bag on, because that's cheating. So you kind of want them in the middle of your half inch plywood, and that should put the screw in the two by three. You gotta be careful, you don't want your screw to be in that crack between your plywood and your two by three board. So you want to shift it down so that when you screw, you're actually screwing in the 2x3, but you want your light as close to the top as you can with making that. And that's actually what helps kind of guide you in place. If you have someone that can help hold this down while you drill it in, it is a lot easier to manage the cable and screwing in the screws in the holder. If you don't, you just kind of have to work your hands and do the best you can. When trying to determine how many of these plastic pieces came in the kit and where you should apply them, here's something that I've done in the past. On the long ends, I use five of these per side. On the bottom, I use three of these. The top is a little different because we need a little help getting our uh, lights in where we want them to be and kind of running it back through. I think I use six of these on the top. And then we that leaves us plenty to do our circle underneath and then do a little nice little light header right here and to do some wire management. So just stick with me, five on the each length, long side, three on the bottom, and plan for six on this top part here. We have all the sides down except this last part of the top board. Before we start assembling this, we are going to pull the, the excess and try to pull it snug. So we're going to go around our edges, give everything a little pull. As I was plying the plastic and the screws, 
I was trying to kind of pull it as I went so it wouldn't be too slack. There we go. I mean, you don't want to pull with all your might and do any damage to the lights, but you want it to be kind of snug. So I'm going to put one here to lock in the corner. And then I'm going to put one as close as I can to that hole so that way my light stays along the board before it goes running down in the hole. We have the outside all the way done and now it's time to take our lights and run it around our hole. And you'll notice we'll have a little bit extra, and I'll show you what we're going to do with that. Same process. You want to make sure that your lights stay above the hole a little bit. You, as we didn't want to interfere with bags staying on the board on the outside, we also don't want to prevent bags from going inside the hole, or as you're reaching in the hole to get the bags, you don't want to be catching your lights. So we want to kind of have them a little bit on the outside lip here just to make sure that they last and we don't have any issues with wear and tear of bags going through and destroying our lights. If you do this my way, the way I showed you, and let's for giggles call it the Carly Tackles way, you get this extra piece of lights here that you get to do something with. If you went the Glow City way, you actually have to wrap it around the board and then your board also when you're stacking it will have a piece of lights right here. So I'm not a big fan of that method. But if you do it the Carly Tackles way, now we have this little extra lights that we get to play with. So I stopped when I finished my circle. We are going to start at this opposite end here, and we are going to see how far we can stretch it. Think about right here. We'll run this all the way up and down, but we're gonna start at this end, and then we'll see how far we can cover. Now that I have most of it done, I'm going to go back to working from the circle and up to see where we can finish this piece off. You should have some of these left, and we're going to use that to do a little wire maintenance. So now that we have the lights done, we are now going to attach our battery pack. The cool thing about Glow City lights is they have a little Velcro that we can stick on there, and this makes it easier to be able to change your batteries. Power button's right here, so you want to make sure that's facing out and easily accessible, and then your batteries just kind of flip up. And install so really nice um, really nice lights from Glow City and all we have to do is attach the velcro where we want to stick our battery pack and then we'll do some uh, wire maintenance with our little extra clips here so I'm going to peel off the stick determine how I want it make sure the button is easy to get to if you're using 2x3 boards, you don't want to stick it up to the top because your little brackets will hang over and they'll probably get broke. If you're using 2x4s, putting it right up inside your board is, is probably the greatest place to put it. You don't want these cables being too tight. You just want them to be, have them out of your way. The reason being is you do need to release this Velcro carefully if you just stuck it on there and be able to move this so that you can change the batteries. So you do want a little bit of loose wiring so that way you can change out your batteries easily. One board with lights down, one more to go. Now let's install the handle. So I'm using a 3 quarter inch nylon rope. I drilled 3 quarter inch holes depending on which size, hand, which size rope that you're using. You could have done this a little bit differently. So I ran the rope through the holes and now I'm going to work on fastening the ends to the cornhole bolt. I'm going to be using these lay screws that have a big end on them to help hold it in. But this was never enough when I built the other cornhole bolt. 
So I also use a 3 8 inch washer. You may not be able to use this big a diameter depending on the size of screws you use, but I would recommend using some type of washer entrapment with your screw to help hold your rope in. So what I do to start is I try to get the one down comfortably, and I'm probably gonna pick the end with the pocket holes because I know I have to get the screw in through that side. And then I will go through and kind of measure what I feel like should be a nice hand that I can easily get my hand in, but also it's tight enough that I don't have to lift it all the way up to my shoulders to get it off the ground. You don't want too long of a handle, and you don't want a handle that you can't get your hand in comfortably. So you kind of got to balance that out. Um, for length of rope, anywhere between 20 and 22 inches. I think this one might be 19 because it got cut a little short. Um, will work just fine for this, and then you can make your length adjustments in the install process. So I'm placing the screw through the washer, through the rope, and it's going to try to twist your rope, so you kind of want to hold that down. Alright, and you can see that first one tries to give you a little bit of trouble because it wants to twist your rope. So you got to hold your rope steady so that your screw can actually get into your board. Now that I have that one in, it's time to measure out what I feel is a good handle thickness. So I'm running my hand through, making sure it's an easy hold, but when I pull it up on the handle, I don't have too much gap. If you can work your screw through your rope, before you try drilling, it does help. Now this next step is optional. With nylon rope, it can fray and tear. So what I've done in the past is I've taken um, a lighter to my rope and kind of melted it in place so it doesn't twist and move as much. You can also use a benzomatic little propane thing as well. Just want to be really careful with this guy. There you go, your handle's installed. Thanks for watching Carly Tackles making a light up formal set. If you saw some products that you might be interested in, I've included the links in the video description down below. I am an Amazon affiliate, which means I get a little kickback if you use my links to purchase something. It goes to support the channel at no extra cost to you. If you're interested in seeing other videos similar to this one, please subscribe to my channel. Carly Tackles DIY, Tools and Gadgets, Tips and Tricks. Echo, turn off the lights.